We postulate a group of four children within out-of-home care in Australia due to neglect or emotional and physical abuse, including substance abuse. These children are from low socioeconomic backgrounds and raised in communities of impoverishment, where many adults display poor literacy and numeracy skills. Additionally, they have experienced at least two changes in both out-of-home care placement and in school. Our focus group imitates the real-life situations, drawing from statistical research conducted by the Australian government. This data formed the parameters of our case study, such as the percentage of children within out-of-home care, the length of time in out-of-home care services, and the reason for intervention and foster placement. Drawing from Snow et al, these children thrive in verbal communication to form relationships and manage so difficult social interactions. Their oral communication compensates for their poor literary skills. Cope and Calantis contend that children have a natural synesthetic capacity, which allows them to draw from gestures, visuals, and sounds. Evidently, these children possess literary skills to memorize synesthetic information important to their survival. It's also reasonable to suggest that the biological families provide these children with the latest technology to demonstrate an image of stability and downplay abuse. Thus, these children often display the capacity to navigate social domains and understand unfamiliar social dialogue through their exposure to various digital devices. Further, our focus group are particularly skilled in what we call their situational numeracy. They attain the ability to understand time in a social context and can use appropriate maps and charts to navigate home. As a result of their exposure to drug abuse and dealing, they possess a strong numerical understanding of units and weights and a recognition of verbal numeracy skills. These are translated into everyday practices such as shopping. Through the impact of neglects, our children have developed the ability to provide basic care for their siblings and themselves. For instance, understanding money values to source food and the digital proficiency for finding instructional videos or information. These lived experiences are what Subera considers to be funds of knowledge. This was examined through Brobram Brenner's model of ecological systems, focusing particularly on their microsystems. First, their exposure to parental drug abuse and dealing have taught them how to manage and converse with people under the influence. Our children have also developed street smarts, allowing them to be resourceful, quick thinking and adaptive to new situations. Additionally, as Heath determines, impoverished communities tend to respond favourably to practical learning. Thus, these children enjoy hands-on activities. Importantly, as the carer for their siblings, our focus group display a strong connection to family values and relate immensely to the protection of their families and siblings. Crucial to the challenges facing our focus group is the fundamental lack of foundational skills. Delays in their education due to trauma and the disruptions of out-of-home care placements culminate in our group's low levels of literacy and numeracy. As a result of this trauma and modelled behaviour from home, this group are often extremely reactive, exhibiting attention-seeking behaviours, interrupting classrooms, and they often lack the ability to focus on tasks when necessary. By this age, these children are in what Piaget would assign the concrete operational stage of development. Theoretically, they should be able to understand the concepts displayed here. However, as we've shown, during the critical period for language development, these children were continuously disrupted and delayed. And after that critical period ends, these skills are increasingly difficult to access and develop. Our group's challenges are further exacerbated by their low socioeconomic status, with the cycle of disadvantage shown here. From this, we can see that the challenges our focus group face don't just extend from their personal experiences, but of an entire social system designed to see them fail. By drawing upon our previous discussion, some of the challenges for educators would include directing engagement constructively within a classroom setting and assessing and intervening in delayed literacy and numeracy skills. We've displayed our group's behavioural struggle within a classroom setting. The challenge for educators would be developing a strong rapport with the students and approaching their teaching from a perspective of individualised learning for the student. With the delays we have discussed, another challenge for educators would be accurately identifying the areas of literacy and numeracy that this focus group lack and developing and implementing appropriate individualised plans. This is particularly challenging when considering the resources and training available for educators within public schools and the amount of time necessary to fully understand the situation of a child and the dedication to informed educational practices. Having identified this group's probable strengths and challenges in relation to literacy and numeracy, we've devised two pedagogies for teaching we believe will be best beneficial for our focus group and the educators involved. 
Both approaches stem from the development and implementation of an individual education plan. The IEP is developed with the intention to build rapport, assess academic capabilities, and understand students' funds of knowledge. The IEP is beneficial in that it lays out specific SMART goals for the student. These goals are centered around their zone of proximal development and are structured to build upon their current skills with the view to gradually bring them in line with established requirements of their year level. Our approach emphasizes the ongoing development of language skills. This is important for our group as we have previously determined they are likely in deficit concerning literacy and numeracy skills. Educators can use this approach in combination with the known funds of knowledge. Activities in the classroom could look something like this. Additionally, when approaching numeracy, beneficial activities engage the hands-on abilities of our focus group. We can examine the effectiveness of this approach through a brief analysis of Comba's case study. The educators here developed rapport and understanding with the student and their family, much like an IEP meeting. Through this, they learned about the student's interests and skills. This study ultimately highlighted the effectiveness of developing a skills-based, individualized curriculum when targeting lower literacy levels. This curriculum builds upon developing the student's academic capabilities, both in one-on-one -on -one sessions targeting reading and identifying sounds, and skills-based activities in social groups such as class discussions and group writing sessions. The success of this approach became apparent in the student's improved engagement, behavior, and literacy abilities. Our second pedagogical approach focuses on a socio-cultural outlook to teaching, which will work in complement with the IEP. As these children have experienced years of trauma and abuse, their self-esteem and self-efficacy have declined significantly in all aspects. As such, it's important in teaching this focus group that these children are positioned as the active agent in their learning, and there is a focus on motivation and building the learner's self-concept. This should begin through discovering or providing them a motivation to learn, starting with extrinsic motivators that can encourage the student to model positive behaviours. This will also negate the trauma of neglect by acknowledging the student's achievements. The tangibility of these rewards can also serve as a physical reminder to the student of how positive behaviour can benefit them. Following this, it's important to establish the student's intrinsic motivators. Goal setting will motivate the student to consider their education not as a requirement, but as a platform to better themselves. This will also allow the students to see themselves as an active agent in their own lives and allow them to determine their own success. Further, forming these intrinsic motivators will improve the student's self-efficacy and esteem. Thus, will be more inclined to learn and develop their skills. These motivators, both extrinsic and intrinsic, must be drawn from the student's funds of knowledge to properly impact the learner. The personalization of these motivators will allow the students to better engage with the learning. Next, while the student follows the IEP, it is important for the educator to reposition the learning outcome to focus on building the learner's critical consciousness before focusing on the curriculum requirements. According to Freer's social cultural theory, teaching should diverge from banking education and instead focus on the creative and open discussion to allow students to formulate their own social conceptions. This will allow students to draw links between their understanding of the world and traditional education systems. Further, the educator must understand the participants' lives to properly enact genuine dialogue with the students by engaging with their funds of knowledge. To also improve on their print literacy and numeracy, the educator must draw from the verbal discussions and use this as a platform for the students to learn to read and write. This can be done in the form of a narrative writing task, mind map or reading activities. 